Hello, this is Mike Swanson. You're listening to the Wall Street Window Podcast. Uh, today I did something a little bit different. I didn't uh, interview a guest, but I went for a walk this afternoon and made a walking podcast, so to speak. Uh, so what you're going to listen to is that discussion. It's thinking about the financial markets, but also thinking about this 48-hour news cycle that we're all living in and social media and how it's impacting our brains in making it harder to see uh, the big picture and various things going on in the stock market uh, is one example of that. So I talked about the market and, and the importance of quantitative easing and Fed Reserve uh, low interest rates and keeping the market afloat uh, at this point in time and going forward for now. Uh, so one quick uh, commercial break and then we'll go to that walking talk. Go ahead, call Hey, I'm interested in the truth about the JFA assassination. Right. Well, what do you want to know? Judy Baker's wild claim, Oswald girlfriend, she knew Ruby and Barry, cancer weapons. Really? I imagine I could claim I have four wheels. It doesn't make me a wagon, but okay. Oswald was on the kill team and trying to prevent the murder of John Kennedy. Come on now. Has a real effort on the JFA assassination built into her claim? Go to Amazon.com. Enter Judith Baker in her own words. You'll get results for a digital copy of a book where Walt Brown utilizes her own words and the known evidence in the case to get at, well, <laughs> a different perspective, let's say. You can get Judith Barry Baker in her own words from the author himself, signed if you request it, by contacting Dr. Brown at KIASJFK at AOL.com. It's a fun book and it actually dissects the many, many fantastic claims. Judith Barry Baker in her own words. Thank you for all the great information. Hey, this is Mike Swanson of WallStreetWindow.com. The odds are you're watching this video because you're a subscriber to my free email list and you saw one of my links uh, and you clicked it to go to this video and, and so you're watching it. Now if you're not, if you're watching this randomly on YouTube, you need to get on my free email list. There's a link associated with this video for you to do that because then you'll get my top stock pick of the month. Now, what I want to talk about today though, um, isn't an individual stock in this video uh, it's trying to step back for a few moments uh, with me and just think about the big picture uh, and that's hard er, and harder uh, for people to do nowadays because we live in what are crazy times times that are uh, you just turn on the TV and you see it. Turn on the computer, you see it. Turn on your so-called smartphone and you'll be bombarded non-stop by constant messages uh, designed to grab your attention, often scare you uh, in one way or the other, and that's how they grab your attention. Usually it's about scaring you about some uh, other uh, that is to be your enemy for you to get all worked up about but this is going on constantly uh, you've been being bombarded like this and everyone is and most people are spending hours and hours and hours consuming uh, social media and always in getting bombarded by these messages and what's going on is that's making it difficult uh, for them to look at the big picture because all the messages going on are all about what's happening at this moment or what's happening in this 48 hour news cycle and when it comes to the financial markets people are carrying that type of uh, engineering they're experiencing uh, through these technology devices and how it's making them to distort uh, the feeling they have over how time is going by and then when it comes to the financial markets they only focus on the daily gyration so the stock market goes up today they get all excited if they're invested in gold and it goes up they get all excited but if it goes down they get despondent all based on the daily action but not what's getting lost is the big picture and something is going on that if you step out of stuff for a while and just think what is going on what is the most unusual thing happening and I'm not just talking about today 
or this month or this past year or what's some guy on television saying but if you think about the financial markets there's more to them than the stock market you got the US dollar you got the precious metals world of gold and silver but the biggest market is the bond market the debt markets all over the world and they move slowly usually <laughs> but we're seeing something and have seen it for so long now or it feels like it's so long that we've become conditioned to it and used to it and we no longer think about it and that is the fact that there is something called negative interest rates in uh, bond markets around the world in other words if you buy government debt in a country that has negative yielding interest rates you are guaranteed to lose money uh, when you buy a bond you're basically are lending someone money in return you get interest payments but when the bonds yield negative rates you don't make money you're guaranteed to lose money so why would anybody lend money to somebody if they're guaranteed to lose money well that is what is going on in the financial world uh, interest rates are so low in just about every country on the planet that there are negative yielding bonds and this is something that started after 2008 it's a direct result of the Federal Reserve reacting to that stock market drop in the financial crisis of 2008, what happened to real estate and mortgage securities, what happened to the banks. Uh, they lowered rates to zero and then they engaged in something they called quantitative easing, which meant they were printing money out of thin air and using that money to buy mortgage securities, to buy uh, bonds, eventually buying U.S. government bonds even. Uh, and that had the effect of driving rates low, keeping them low. And other central banks around the world uh, did this. I say, uh, you probably know this, uh, but the point is, this has been going on for so long that we no longer think about it. And we no longer think about what does it mean? What is the real impact of this? Because never before in human history, has such a thing ever happened? Never before in human history until this decade were there negative yielding government bonds, uh, but something new. Uh, and we spend so much time thinking about the daily gyration, the daily news cycle, when we miss the most important event when it comes to financial markets of the past 10 years, negative interest rates. And tomorrow, uh, the Federal Reserve is going to have a meeting. They're going to lower rates. They started lowering rates this year, of course, in July. Did it again in September. But now they're going to do it again tomorrow. Most likely, uh, the way things stand, this should be the last interest rate cut for this year. But in July when they first did the rate cut cycle uh, the stock market dumped because the Fed Reserve Chairman talked about this is just a precaution and he doesn't know he doesn't think we're gonna need a whole lot of these cuts and he said this is like 1998 and the people at the time in the stock market they wanted him to be more dovish to be more aggressive about lowering rates than he said he would be so um, but let's and then in august the market dumped the yield curve inverted there was panic of some sorts and he had to uh, talk uh, more aggressive about lowering interest rates but why you know the market it didn't even decline we're not we're not supposed to be in a recession they tell us uh why is it necessary to lower interest rates if the stock market just falls 5%, why is that a drop of enough to cause something like a panic among the central banks? Uh, it's quite remarkable. 
And I would say it's got something to do, it's connected with negative interest rates that we see in different parts of the world. Why do we have these negative interest rates? What do they represent? How long can it go on? These are questions nobody asks, no one contemplates, but simply asking them tells you that we live in unusual times in the financial markets. It's a massive bubble. It's a bubble that if it wasn't, uh, that if the Fed wasn't cutting rates just because the market dropped 5%, the whole thing could collapse overnight. So any signs of, of uh, any weakness in the economy or any uh, dip of any sorts that, you know, 20 years ago wouldn't mean anything, now causes panic in Washington, D.C. It causes the president to yell out on Twitter and demand uh, rate cuts because if the rate cuts don't happen, we're in such a bubble that everything will just collapse. And that's how dependent everything is on keeping these interest rates super low and having to drop them even lower on any sign of weakness. So what all this says is Every, you know, we're all focused on the day to day, but when you step back, this is a really unusual market, unusual situation, and it's not going to last forever like this. It could last the rest of the year like this, go into next year. Who knows? But the risk is if you're 100% invested in the stock market, you don't own any other investments, when this stuff starts to unwind or it gets out of control at some point, not a good situation. But that's all right because there's things going up in the market that will benefit no matter what happens. Exhibit number one, of course, is gold and silver. Gold and silver since October of uh, 2018 have actually outperformed the stock market, gone up more than the stock market, and so mining stocks. Yeah, they're pausing now uh, around Labor Day. Well, let's back up. In spring, gold went through 1350. It went all the way up to 1550 by Labor Day. It's a 200 dollar point move in the price of gold, and that created a bonanza uh, for many mining companies that produce gold because if the value of gold goes up $200 then the amount of money they make from mining gold and selling gold goes up at an even faster uh, percentage rate than that. We saw that last week when uh, Yamina Gold increased its dividend by 100%. Gold giant Anico Ego uh, increased its dividend by 40%. It's hard to find a sector in the market now that's seeing earnings growth like that, that's creating dividend boosts. But that's what's happening in gold uh, and silver. But they're pausing now because the price of gold peaked out a little bit 50, uh, around Labor Day at 1550 and it's had a pullback in a consolidation period. And when that happens, because everyone is so focused on these day-to-day -day gyrations, they stop paying attention. Because it's only day-to-day -day action that's influencing now most people's brains when it comes to analyzing and looking at what's going on. That's all they talk about on the news. What's happening today? Well, what's happened over the past 14 months is more important. And over the past 14 months, the price of gold is outperforming the stock market. The price of silver is outperforming the stock market. Mining stocks is outperforming the stock market. If you want to beat the stock market, generally speaking, you want to be in the sectors that are outperforming stock market averages. Exactly what gold and silver and the mining stocks have been doing. And you want to buy those sectors on dips and periods of consolidation. That dip, that consolidation period may continue beyond tomorrow. It may continue beyond next week. I can't predict the future date at which it will end, but I can tell you it's an exciting spot in the market to get involved in. And that's what I'm doing. And it's also a spot in the market that will benefit when the day comes in which this reality of negative interest rates starts not to be helpful to the financial markets, but becomes 
uh, starts to become a problem. Not a problem yet. People are benefiting from it. It's created the entire environment uh, when it comes to the economy, when it comes to financial markets that we're in right now. It's helped keep the stock market up, which helps make people go out and spend money because they feel like they got a lot of money in, in their brokerage accounts. But it's all dependent on negative interest rates. Ne and, you know, it, it, <laughs> that we have negative interest rates in some bonds. And, it's and, th and that continuing is dependent on the Fed having to lower rates to keep everything propped up. And they're going to do that for as long as they possibly can. But what happens when the time comes when this situation that never before existed in human history until this decade begins to unwind or becomes unsustainable? Can't talk about that on CNBC. We can't think about it because it's hard to think about it when you don't see an impact on today's action in the markets. But it's something to be aware of, you know. And a simple solution isn't to sell out of the, all the stocks you own or whatever, but just simply have some positions in gold and silver and mining stocks that are out before the market anyway, but would be acting as safe havens. And we saw a whiff of that in August when the stock market sold that first Fed cut meeting and the bond market soared and the price of gold took off. That's the time of action that is going to happen at some point again in the future. And you can't really predict when it's going to happen ahead of time. I can't sit here and say on such and such date, I'm throwing all my money in gold and silver because the next day it's going to go crazy. You can't predict the future like that. Instead, you got to position ahead of events. And it's pretty much impossible to do that with all of your money in one big bet. So you just put in a little bit. And then you're positioned and you don't have to sweat it out and worry what happens day to day. You got to align your thinking not with day to day action, but with the long term trends and the future change in those trends, even if they're not happening next week or next month. But they are, things are happening in the markets. You know, we've seen stocks that were once said to be must-own stocks, such as NVIDIA, such as Netflix, now lag the market and do terrible. I've got an account with Robinhood, and they show you the top 100 stocks owned by the most number of people, ranking them all by the number of owners. And all the stocks at the top are doing terrible this year. People got to make changes to be ahead of what's changing in the markets and what's now the best thing to be in going forward. Not what was good two years ago, but what is going to be good next year or the year after. I submit to you it's going to be gold, silver, and the mining stocks. Not because of how they're acting today, but because they're what's going to benefit when quantitative easing and negative interest rates no longer seem to be helpful but become curse words or feel like them. But these but gold and silver has been out before in the market since October. Anyway, just wanted to talk with you about these things. Try to get you to think not about what is going to happen today in the market or what's going on in this 48 hour news cycle and it's trapping people's minds so people can't really think clearly about what's going on they're stuck watching the social media and they're missing the big picture they're not thinking about it it's hard to think about it
The only way you can think about it is to get away. Turn off those devices. Just get away for a while. Take a walk. Take a drive. Take a vacation. Turn off those devices. And then you can think a little bit more about what's going on around you. You can't think about what's going around you if you're staring at a cell phone and reading a tweet about something that happened five minutes ago. And then in 30 more minutes, there's going to be another tweet about something that happened at that moment. You can't think about the moment. You got to think about the big picture. What has been going on for the last 10 years? We got negative interest rates. We got in, in, in markets around the world. We've got a Federal Reserve that's now lowering rates just because the stock market falls 5%. This isn't normal times, but we've gotten used to it, and then, so we no longer think about it. But you got to start thinking about it, because when they change, you won't be ready for what comes. You got to be ready. So anyway, that's what I wanted to talk with you about. Got to get ready. Got to keep thinking about the future, not about the past or the moment of the second. If you want to successfully invest over the long run in the financial markets so if you're new you saw this randomly on youtube subscribe to my free email list there should be a link to do that associated with this video click that get on the email list you'll get my next stock pick and my future updates so talk with you later